side of the conservatory. I like the academics. And um, you can just play the music and not note anything about it. Oh, I like the academics. So we said I was <laughs> <Leave me alone. laughs> in the Baroque period. Sonata was termed loosely a piece meaning to be played rather than sung. Oh. No set form. So it's set form, so we can't play it wrong. Sonata in, in indicates in the Baroque period, right? Yeah, indicates instrumental music. Yeah. So it sounds to me like we've got a continuum going. We've got a solo line going. We've got a, a, a counterpoint line going, I suppose. Right? So probably a, a string quartet or trio, I guess. Maybe, or it could have been like a to do with what we call sonata form, yeah. right? I remember mine. Yeah, you remember that now? Yeah. <sighs> All those things in music history that come back to bite us. Mm. So we're Baroque though, so I like this light feel, space, space is good. Um, let's just say like if this was written for organ at the time, it would have been, would it have been a mechanical organ or a pneumatic organ? Ooh. What's a pneumatic organ? Isn't that one that like some kid would like to yeah, punch like a couple of them. And then you had the air run. running through, and then <coughs> when you push down the key, the air ran over yeah. the key, right? What's a mechanical organ? So we got one. It's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah. It's a big old compressor blowing. Oh, uh, that's an electric organ. Oh, shit. Well, then that's my Actually, those can be pneumatic, too, because they just have well, a... Well, like, 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 yeah, it's where you press the key and it releases air, but there's not always air moving over the reeds. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference. So would this have been pneumatic or mechanical? I think it's mechanical. Mechanical? Mechanical. Okay. So we had a 50-50 shot. Yeah. Would have been a mechanical organ. Pneumatic organs were not a thing until the Sansaw organ symphony is one of the first things that we have with a pneumatic organ, and it was a French invention, not a, a uh, Italian thing. So when you go into those old Italian cathedrals, sometimes they've been retrofitted with a pneumatic organ, but often they still have the old mechanical organ. All the Bach organ stuff, it's all for mechanical organ. So it's a much cleaner sound. It's a, it's a much more articulated sound, oh, right? So then if there's not a supply of air for the air to be released from, then where does the air come from? I don't really, I can't tell you that. I don't really understand that part. I've never seen one. I've only played with uh, with pneumatic organs. Um, so I don't have a great answer for you. That's where my knowledge is due. But you can look it up on the internet while you're driving, just report. No. It's not a Text is me. Text is me. You just be like, hey, Google. Google's an I'm just saying that you could. I'm not recommending that you do. <laughs> okay. So, Brandon, play your part again. And it, Todd, what I want you to be thinking about is how do you fit into this? If you're playing the, the, the basso continuo part, supposedly, right? How do you fit into this if you're like a harpsichord or a clean organ sound? Okay, Brandon. Um. So 
I know that when we when we work our music, sometimes I get on you about intonation, or sometimes we talk about articulation and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's style and really knowing what you need to do to make that work. And in order to know the style, you have to just have like a little bit of historical background about what you're actually playing, especially if it's a transcription. If it's a work written for trombone, it's easy. It's like, oh, I'm a trombone player. I'm just gonna play it the way I would play it. <laughs> right? That's the easy one. But one of the reasons we do all these transcriptions, I mean, part of it was. When I was first coming up, even then, like there wasn't anything really original written for trombone. It just wasn't part of our thing to like constantly be creating commissions. And now I spent half my time trying to find commissions because you know, music's fun and it's fun to have stuff written for trombone. But what we used to do is do all these transcriptions. And this is also a way of learning music history. So now music history is living within you. It's part of you. You have been transported to 1625 or whatever it was. Oh no, my leg. Oh, I think it's 1976. <laughs> that's the transcription. That's the, that's the publication date. Ralph Sauer was in the height of his career. His hair was looking good. Uh, like 
the, the second light. Sure, it's taxing. 
That's why we're going to do it again. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Snap. Last night I'm doing that horn, uh, the horn sectional, and, you know, I was talking like this, and I take my glasses off, and I talk to them because I can't see because my glasses are just fogged up. Right. But huh, at one point, Trevor's like, why are, why are you talking so much? You're, like, you're telling us a lot of stories today, so I'm giving you a chop break. This is, this is a chosen choice. <laughs> this is a way of teaching, so thanks. You're welcome. There's your chopper. All right. Can we back it up? I, actually, I want to go back to the same place without the bar pen. Uh, yeah. I think, well, for one thing, it's still less secure than the beginning. So if we just do it again, maybe it'll be a little bit more secure, right? But I think the other thing is, um, if you feel like you're... light, it's fluffy, it's broke. Okay. Okay. Forte 
from 14 and still pick up to 21 then piano and then go back four play like two measures later but I've yeah. been playing I like think we could tear piano. Piano. <laughs> maybe like piano for the first time <laughs> I think that's what he's applying, putting 